Hi, my name is Narsim Hamad Riyad. I am a senior developer advocate in Digital Ocean. And in this video today, we are going to discuss about how we can take the RAG applications further, how to containerize them and also how to deploy them into the GPU droplets, which is our newest offering. For that, let's first take a look at what we have as the application in itself. And this is the diagram that actually talks about different components what we have built as part of this application. And the first one is the user and there's a very simple user interface for the person to question. And we will link that with a web application, which is a separate component. I'm talking about the components because that is going to be useful to create these as containers in the future. So we have broken this down into, let's say, web component, which uses LLM. And the store documents, which is another component, which is to store the documents that are present in the DO spaces. So we are going to use DO spaces for storing the information that is needed for this application. And then once it is available, it is downloaded and it will be vectorized and stored into vector database. And the NVIDIA container toolkit is very much required to run the container workloads on this machines because of which you're going to have that as well. Let's take a look at the code that we have here. And this is very simple in terms of the web application, which we already talked about. This contains needed files, the web and the retrieval documents. Make sure that the data, whenever the question is asked by the user, is retrieved from the vector database and shown in the UI. The store service is something which is containing the store documents.bi, which is actually doing the job of uh, converting the PDFs into vectors and storing into the Chroma database in this case. And then we do have some scripts to help us with uh, the prerequisites and running the application. Most importantly, the Docker Compose file is what something I want to highlight here because this is what segregates the, the application into multiple uh, containers. One of them is a Chroma DB itself, which will run at 8000 when we do our Docker Compose up. And when the store documents container starts running, then actually the documents will be downloaded and stored in, into Chroma DB. And this is, this is going to be the second container. And the web application, this is going to be the third container. And when it starts running, it will, it will depend on, of course, the store documents run first. And then it will, it will be running on 7860 port. And all of this will be connected via this network bridge. And also we have a species.config so that we can provide the DO spaces configuration values beforehand so that that can be used by the application to download the PDFs. So this is what the Git code structure and the whole application, how it works. We let's quickly go and run this one. Uh, to start off, of course, we need some prerequisites which are like DigitalOcean account. Uh, you, the link is provided here. You can do, go ahead and create a DigitalOcean account. DO CTA, this is required simply to make things easier. Using the CLI, we can make it faster. And DO CTL installation guide is also provided here. We do have a prerequisites.ss, which is present in the scripts that can be run after we get access to GPU droplets. I'll talk about it later. So starting with setting up the infrastructure itself, let's take a look at DO CTL command. So DO CTL compute droplet create and this is the name of the droplet that we can give and the region is star1. This is the image to use. And we are providing this GPU droplets in two configurations, 1H100 and 8H100. In this case, we're going to be needing only 1H100. That's why I'm mentioning this as the size that we need. Also SSH keys. So we can upload the public key of one of our SSH keys onto the digital ocean. So here is where you can just do that. In the control panel, you can just come here and in the settings tab, the security tab, you will uh, get this option to add SSH key. And when this is added, we will get a fingerprint and that fingerprint can be used in the DOCTL command to start the GPU droplet. Please note that I will be deleting this SSH key once it is used because of for the security reasons. Next, so let's actually give that a try and see that how we can start up a GPU droplet instead of Putting all these values here, I have already made a note of I know this command. Let me execute this in a VS Code environment. So this is my VS Code. Let me run this command. So this should give me, yeah. So this is the new GPU droplet that I have got. And let's say to give, get more information about this, 
I can just go to the GPU droplets page. Let me refresh this page. All right. So this is the machine and it's, which is still getting provisioned because of which we're going to wait. I don't want to make the video longer. So let me pause it and come back to it. All right. The GPU droplet that we wanted is available. Let's go inside. Okay. We do have information about more details about the GPU droplet here. The most important thing that we need here is the IP address because we'll be using this IP address to do SSH onto this machine. And then we're going to spin up the containers that we have. So the IP uh, address is copied. Let's go to VS code. And in this VS code, let's use the remote extension. I have already installed this extension. That's how you can see this. When I click on this, I get an option to connect current window to host. And I want to add a new SSH host. I'll do SSH root. This is the IP address. Enter. And let me store that into my config values as well. And I would want to connect. And uh, continue. So this will make the VS code to connect to the GPU droplet machine. I will be able to use the terminal. I'll be able to open the folders within that machine. And then I can just use it as I'm using it on my local. Let me create a terminal. Invite. Let's get back and see that what is the next thing that you're supposed to do. When you're back. So we have access to the machine. We did an SSH to that. And let's move to the Git cloning part of it. I copied the command. Let's come back here and then do Git clone and also move to the rack containers folder. So it did both. And then let's see what is pending. After this is over, there is one thing which I mentioned that we have to run the prerequisites.sh because it contains him adding uh, the Docker Compose and have a couple of other libraries that are important to be uh, made available for this machine. So that will be executed using uh, the prerequisites.sh. Let's give that permission to that script so that it will uh, not throw any error the next time when I execute it. All right. So we are giving the execute permissions to that. Let's execute this. And I think this is going to take a couple of minutes as well. So when I start executing this command, I'm going to pause this video and we'll come back here. All right, that worked. Please note that prerequisite will reboot the machine because of which I again connected back to the remote machine in my VS code. After that, what we need is, again, I'd be have to move to the rack containers. Let me do that. And inside this, we are going to use the spaces.config. This is required because we need the configuration values to be updated to connect to the Devo spaces. What does this contain? Basically, this contains the key value pair. Basically, only the keys, the values is supposed to be that we need to update it. Just to open up this file and show the contents of it, let's say vi. We'll also update these values. So we are store service spaces.cfg. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, this region, endpoint, and bucket name are available in the Devo spaces. The key and secret is something that we created. I had already created. I have just these values available now. I'm going to update this and store or save this particular file in just a second because it's sensitive information. I'm just pausing this video for a second. All right, we are good to go. We have updated the configuration values with the DO spaces, key, secret, and the other values that we had already noted. Now, the only thing is to run this application. So that is very simple using export NVIDIA runtime is equal to Drew and run.sh, which is basically containing the Docker Compose command. Let's go back and uh, execute this. Uh, basically, it will make sure that it will ensure the GPU's availability for our application and the Docker Compose will be run as part of run.sh. And uh, this is, again, is going to take a few minutes because it, it has to actually create the Docker images and then run it as a containers. The command execution has completed, which basically means that all the three containers are running. Let's take a look as to how to access that. Now, let's go 
check out this IP address, okay, because we'll be accessing the web application via this IP address and the, the application is exposed in the port 7860. So let's provide this IP address and then 7860. This should open up the Gradio application, very simple application that we have built. Ask anything about GPU droplets. So here is where I can just ask any questions based on the PDF that I have already uploaded. I will just ask it say, what about the pricing of these GPU droplets? So I should get an answer uh, about the pricing of these GPU droplets. Basically, this is correct. So the same single GPU cost, so so on, and why eight GPU plan cost, so on. This is a good information because this is what I actually wanted. I could even have more questions. Another question probably I would want to know is that what are the GPU configurations available. Let's see. I already know the answer. What I just want to know that what this provides. It mentions that yes, the configurations available are single GPU and the eight GPUs. Absolutely correct. So this is how we can take the simple RIG application further, containerize them. We can first build as a, a small components and then Created as uh, three separate containers and deploy it in a single go by just doing Docker Composer up by just installing a couple of prerequisites. Yeah, that's it for today's video, and I meet you again in the next one. Thank you so much.